Welcome everyone. Thank you for being patient while I had to press reset, had some technical difficulties, which happens in life. So let me just say, life still happens. One of the reasons why I'm so excited to show up, introduce myself to this beautiful Facebook tribe today and share with you how my area of expertise, the Akashic Records, can really be a powerful tool when we are showing up doing this thing called real life. Rhonda Turlington, thank you so much for inviting me to do a guest video here inside of this space. I'm very much looking forward to meeting and connecting with your tribe, so say hello when you get here. Matrice Falcon, ooh, I loved the way that your name just rolled off of my tongue, so thank you for allowing me to say it. Welcome here to this space. I'm expecting to see some familiar faces in here as well as some new ones. So once you get here, say hello. Let me know where you are from. If you are meeting me for the first time, my name is Emily Harrison. I'm originally from very small town, Missouri. Small town, Missouri, right on the Mississippi River. I had, oops, I got excited, knocked my beads off my table. I had a really interesting experience along with kinds of um, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's kind of like a, an archetype story. The Midwestern girl gets on the bus, packs up, leaves, goes to Hollywood to pursue her fame and fortune. That was my real life. <laughs> and it was a pretty badass journey. I have to say Jillian James. Hello. Welcome. Kate is here too. Houston, Texas in the house. Awesome. So I spent 20 years in Hollywood as an actress really, really powerful, exciting journey, traveling the world, working with a lot of really cool actors and directors, and had experienced a lot of spiritual transformation along with a lot of real life. A lot of my issues came up in that space. I'm sure you can imagine. Um, I like to, ooh, Ireland in the house. Let me, let me, I gotta lean in a little bit. Jill Dow, Jill Dow, welcome. So my process in Hollywood really opened me to metaphysics. I got really excited about how I could learn to use my own energy to procure my career, to move it forward, which worked for a long time. However, who I was on the inside, my own issues, all of that stuff was still within me, no matter how, uh, how much success I achieved or how much rejection I was able to tolerate because both of those things happened in that space. It was never truly enough. The biggest acting job I was doing was on myself. At this point in my life, I had children, I was married, and um, had used meditation and diving into self-study to really soothe myself. It wasn't the only thing that I used. I used a lot of pharmaceuticals as well. Oh, oh hell, back in my Hollywood days, I used a lot of non-pharmaceuticals. And um, definitely always been somebody who has been a raw, sensitive person and a variety of different techniques to soothe that, right? When, in Hollywood, lots of opportunity to be social and to uh, partake in drug, sex, and rock and roll is available to you. When you dive into pharmaceuticals, pills, bills, there are a variety of different antidepressants you can take to try to dissect, peel away all of the things that are causing you to not be comfortable in your own space. And I also explored meditation. This was the most profound tool for me because as many of you know who have experienced this, when you create the space to go inward, regardless of what modalities present themselves to you, regardless of what different kind of techniques work, you can trust that you will find your way. Because as you begin to look inward, what happens is, I say it's, it's like turning your awareness inward causes your, your DNA to become bioluminescent. And when we talk about the bigger picture of what's going on on our planet right now, our DNA is coming online. We are moving into a Christed conscious state. So using Jesus Christ as an avatar, he was one of many, but using him as an avatar, we, any, any, any Christians up here in the house? I grew up very, very, very Southern Baptist. Um, so Jesus, I know he said this. 
He said, the least amongst you can do all that I have done and more. And what was Jesus doing? Well, one, he was performing miracles, which is pretty damn cool. He understood how to make his universe malleable and reconstruct plasma, the plasmic field in a way that we haven't really gotten to yet. I'm talking about walking on water kind of stuff, right? But let's talk about more, more kind of, oh, and the alchemy that he did turning the, turning, turning the water into wine and multiplying the loaves. Thank you for that heart. I hear you. I see you. <clears throat> but let's bring it more practical. What else did Jesus do? He was a compassionate man. He was breaking stereotypes. He was showing what it meant to stand in a higher frequency of love and connection to source energy. We have lots of avatars who have shown up over the human timeline to share this. We've got the Buddha. We've got Mother Mary, Mother Teresa. You got lots of them. So whatever is meant to illuminate your innate knowledge to make sense to you is going to begin to come forward when you turn to a disciplined study of meditation. It just begins to create that space, that opening in you. That is the nature of what it does. For me personally, the Akashic Records became my go-to space. And it's an interesting story about how they became my go-to space. I'll tell you just a little bit more background and then we'll dive in because, hello, the name of the group is uh, Free Psychic Readings. And, that's, and I really uh, love to show up and share with you guys the magic that comes through from the space of the records. But since I am in, in a new space, thank you for allowing me just to share a little bit of my background and my own personal story. So for me, the Akashic Records became the no-brainer when um, I had done enough self-study, enough self-practice, and every time, and I learned a ton of different modalities. Whoever showing up, sharing what they knew, I was there listening to it. I was practicing it. I was like, oh yeah, I feel it. I feel it. I wasn't judging any of the processes. I was like a sponge just absorbing. How many of you guys have ever found yourself in that state? I'm finding that it's it's a huge pattern for we light workers who are emerging. You really just because there's been suppression for a long time. So we've been required to be in self-study, truthfully. It's been kind of a hush-hush kind of thing. But the more we begin to talk about it, the more knowledge emerges, the more teachers that emerge, the more opportunity we have to create this sacred classroom together. Pretty powerful. So for me, the Akashic Records became my no-brainer when I had done enough self-study and I had moved from the phase of self-study into to practice, meaning uh, I'm a mom of three. For those of you guys who don't know, I have three children. I am also a wife, and I, I'll skip forward. I, I paused the story when we lived in Hollywood. We now live right outside of Lake Tahoe where our life is freaking magical too here. I'll get to that part. Or maybe I'll have to leave it for a next episode because as you guys can see, I can talk a lot, tell a lot of stories, and I know you want readings. But I got to the point, I want to tell you because I know there are so many light workers in this space. You're naturally gravitating towards this space. And when you begin to see yourself, one, through other people's journey and you begin to identify parts of your journey, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, along the way, you begin to become empowered. So thank you for allowing this to be actually a part of the reading as well, okay? So I began to practice, meaning when I was dropping the kids off at school and I was walking back to my car, if I knew that there was a parent, uh, maybe parents who were struggling in a relationship, because you know how the talk goes on campus. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Uh, just saying. Or parents who are struggling with dis-ease. What I would do is I would just gently walk behind them and just move, move energy, move density. Yes, I do believe that it's always important to ask permission, and I do believe that there is an opportunity to communicate with a higher self of another individual if you're in that state. So if any of you guys are you're like in that state, you're like, I don't know if I should have done that or not. I did. That's what I did. Um, with the understanding of the soul contract that was already in place with that individual of, the, of, of both of our own growth. And so you, guys, you, you have to follow. This is why meditation... And having your own practice is so important that you can begin to trust your own process. 
So this is what I would do. I move the energy like this. And there was a gentleman in the neighborhood who I just knew from walking his dog in the neighborhood. And then all of a sudden he didn't walk his dog anymore. And then six months later, here he comes hobbling down the road. Daniel, what happened to you? Oh, I broke my ankle. It was really bad, shatter. I'm just having trouble healing, but starting to get back out. Like, hey, you want to come sit on? Like, this is coming out of my mouth, and I'm almost trying to, like, pull it back in, right? Hey, you want to come sit on my porch, and I'll do some energy healing for you? And he was like, okay. And I'm literally not really knowing who spoke up to say that and thinking, pardon my French. I did spend 20 years in Hollywood, so I have a foul mouth. If my husband comes home, right? How am I going to explain this random neighbor who's now sitting on my porch? <laughs> but we went with it anyway. And I hooked him up to some binaural beats and I had my tuning fork. This is one of the first tools I ever had. My mama gave me this tool as a, as a Christmas present. It's calibrated to the frequency of ohm. So I whack it, I can send it into my heart or anywhere. So I get my tuning fork out and I'm waving it around. All of a sudden, here comes Daniel's dad in spirit speaking directly to me we're having this whole conversation back and forth this i am not a medium this has not happened especially not this uh with this level of engagement for me before i didn't say anything to daniel at that point i was just kind of taking mental notes and after his little meditation was over he i sent him on his way he hobbled home uh, i went in the bathroom and kind of looked myself in the mirror just kind of like getting grounded you know you kind of tend to get a little spacey and seeing some sacred geometry i'm like oh okay and I hear spirits say, reach out and tell him and ask if he wants to hear the information. And I'm like, damn it. Oh, no, I thought it was for me. And that's super scary because he gave me right down to his name. And I'm like, Dew. all right, fine, fine. So I send Daniel a text. And I'm like, all right, I got some information from your father who had passed. And if, you're, if you would like to hear the information, I'd be happy to share it with you. And so we start off, of course, Daniel's like, yeah, I'll hear it. And so it opens up the conversation. We start off with the name and I start telling him the name and the name that I was getting that he was bringing through, the dad was bringing through was a J name like Bob, 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 a short, short name like that, but it was not Bob. It was a J name, J. And so I tell him and I'm, and Daniel's like, Oh, my dad's name was Alan. Actually, I didn't tell him that at first. I said, what was your father's name? And he said, my, my dad's name was Alan. And I'm like, oh, I got it totally wrong. <laughs> my first time coming out being like, hey, here's some information. Totally wrong. And so I, to I proceeded to tell him, like, well, I was getting Bob, 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 but not a Bob, but it was like a J name. So what I, that whole little thing that I just did for you that I don't need to repeat. And he, then that's when his face went white. And he said, oh, well, his name was Alan J, J-A-Y, and he went by J. So at that point, everything else that came out continued to be the same potency of information and clarity of information to the point where it was undeniable that these are skills that when you have a discipline and practice, you can hone them. And these are muscles that every human being has and can grow. And that became my mission. Like, how do I share this with people? I looked for a certificate. I'm like, I got to get certified in some, some metaphysical shit. I don't know what it is. I got to find something. For me, I knew it wasn't Reiki or yoga. I didn't know what it was. I was flipping through a Conscious Life magazine that I had picked up in LA from my last audition. And I'm like, looking for, through classes and there are different ones. And I'm, I see an Akashic Records training course. I'm like, bam, that's me. I'm in. My mom, same lady who gave me the tuning fork, had gifted me an Akashic record session about 15 years prior. So I didn't know this at the time, but I do know now that anytime you come into contact with the records, your connection to the records is initiated. So first, I'd like to hold that space for every single one of you here on the replay today that this process will initiate and open you to the beautiful magic of your Akashic Records. And as soon as I dove into that process of working with a mentor, moving from self-study to like must dive in and engage and learn from the masters, which had been my tendency, my protocol in other areas of my life, in my acting career, like, fuck, man, I want the best, oh, there it is again. I want the best acting coach in the business. 
So I transferred that idea, ideas, that ideal, that motivation, that as aspect of who I was, I can't talk, to the Akashic Records. And I began to uh, open very, very dynamically. All of my guides, masters, lineage within the records came forward. And the knowledge began, all kinds of unlocking began happening very, very quickly. I put in the description for you guys, the Akashic Records are the realm of consciousness where all information is stored, past, present, all possible futures. This is like the cosmic library. This is different than other modalities in that this is this allows us to access our own personal medicine. And I want to invite you to think about what does medicine mean in our modern day. We use medicine for a variety of things. One, to heal. So think about going to the doctor and getting medicine to heal. We also use psychology and therapy and, and this mode of medicine to heal our thoughts, to understand ourselves more dynamically. Okay, so uh, we unfold ourselves through medicine when we explore ourselves through modern psychology in those terms. We also use medicine to grow. Think of food and nourishment for our bodies. I'm so glad that they just gave me that analogy because before, my guides had given me the analogy of steroids. I didn't really love that one, but it makes sense, right? We take that medicine in order to grow. The Akashic Records allow us access to our own personal medicine for healing ourselves, for understanding ourselves more dynamically, and for growing, advancing your psychic skills, creating your own energy healing modalities, really unfolding the highest potential, those highest futures that are available for you. It's such a magical realm. It caused me to catapult in 2015 once I became an Akashic Record practitioner. Things unfolded very, very quickly. I started writing for the Huffington Post. I partnered with Coach Nick. We created, um, based on both of our backgrounds in entertainment, Coach Nick has a background in the music industry in Canada. We've created platforms for other light workers to create their own shows. We have a network of 25 live stream shows. Shout out to the Akashic Academy Facebook page. If you're not a follower of that Facebook page, please come join us over there. We've got lots of powerful information that we're sharing, not only about the Akashic Records, but we have energy healers from all over the planet with different areas of expertise who are coming forward, sharing experiences, knowledge, and you'll find your opportunity to grow. We have such a, a beautiful, welcoming community who are like-minded in collaboration and expansion. So I definitely want to invite you to come over there. And now I want to invite you to experience the magic of the Akashic Records by asking some questions. So any questions, there's a no holds barred. Go ahead and start typing in your questions. I'm going to share with you a little bit of guidance, however, in terms of how to get the best information possible from the Akashic Records. That is to always own everything you gotta understand and be ready for the akashic records are going to deliver the amount of information and insight and healing that you're ready to receive and if you're still blaming somebody else for the circumstance that you're in you have not found a state of empowerment where you can receive as much as you can from this space yet so i will lovingly give you a kick in the ass and help you get there if you allow me to just so you know that's how it works here's else how i work Here's else. Here's else how it works. Because the Akashic Records have their own consciousness. Oh, I just, I'm flicking down here, rolling in. Sadie says her middle son's name is Jay Allen. That's so cool. Um, another amazing thing about how the Akashic Records work are they have their own consciousness. So not only do I want to bring in insight for you guys from the space of your Akashic Records, but I also want to bring through healing transmissions. I'm, I have a beautiful process. I told my damn story so long today that I'm not going to take you through the whole guided meditation to enter into that space. Um, but I do that very, very often. And if you're interested in experiencing that, let me just say, I offer free insight sessions so people can experience that one-on-one. -on -one. And I'll escort you into your own Akashic Records. I'll just go grab that link right now for you guys. Um, 
But for the purpose of today, because I want to dive in and start answering your questions, I'm going to do a quick connection into the records. But how I do it is really a magical process. It is unique to me. It was gifted to me by my guides and masters in the space of the records. It's what I teach my students. It's what I take my clients through. It is a combination of my light ancestry, we'll call it, all of the different um, beings that have come forward to support me and given to the lineage of me and all of the people that I work with. So it's a very sacred, special, and unique process. And there are a shit ton. I really feel like I shouldn't say shit when I'm talking about this beautiful process. But I also... <sighs> um, I heard my own self talking and I, and I messed myself up. I don't know what I was saying. A shit ton of activations. That's what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Along the way, they do have a sense of humor. They're a little flexible with me, but they do, they do keep me in line and call me out. You guys will see them calling me out as well. Spanking me. All right. There are a ton of activations along the way when you sign up for that free insight session with me that will open up your psychic gift skill senses. All right, so I'm going to go scrolling through. Oh, thank you, Sherry. What is the right way to ask a question in the records? Oh, first of all, recognizing that owning your uh, owning everything that you're creating that you're looking for insight is going to be the most give you the most powerful environment within yourself to expand. So, start questions like what can I more dynamically understand about and then you would fill in the blank with whatever the fuck karmic situation that you can't get out of. Okay. Whatever you're in the washing machine about. What do I still need to learn so I can release blah, blah, blah. And they usually give cool medicine, dynamic protocol. Like I said, we'll do an energetic activation, which is just me sending energy with its own consciousness. I can't explain what it does for you, you just have to watch and see over the next couple of days. But I know it's beautiful and it works and it creates. Especially if you go back and you nurture it, you water it, you remember this and you just breathe into it and create space for it, you'll get powerful stuff from it. But the records also a lot of times bring in um, specific protocol. Time questions are interesting because time is completely different in those realms then we experience it. So if you ask a time sort of question, oh, I see a first one here. Darren's asking what does the future hold? So we'll dive into that. Um, I just want to scroll through and make sure I start at the point where I'm reading all of the questions. And I'll try to get through as many of them as I can. Okay. So if you ask time questions, think, uh, just recognize the answers are going to come more in gateway form, meaning not in two months or three months or five years, more like when you learn to release something, the gateway, okay? Okay, so diving in, Carrie Louise, I was asleep and went to this white room. I feel I crossed over. I was told I can access the Akashic Records this way. Is this true? Um, I'm gonna say yes, there are many, many different ways to access the Akashic Records, and truthfully, we're all accessing the Akashic field, which is, I have a slight distinction from the Akashic record. The Akashic field is just the cells that are recording information all around us. It's, it's that impermeable, etheric connection between all of us. However, that is, not, that is responsive to the individual. That is, not res that is not recorded from a neutrality point. So if you are interacting with the Akashic field from a pissed off mood, you're going to get pissed off support back. See, that's, 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 that's like the law of attraction. Whatever you're putting out, you're getting back. <clears throat> so we are actually interacting with the Akashic field. That would be like the law of attraction in every moment. However, when you go to sleep and you release a lot of the mm, constructs that allow, that create disbelief, I should say, or tension in your waking life, it is very possible to access this space. And if that's where you feel like you were, I honor that, sister. Um, I can tell you that when, if you don't have a lot of like vocabulary or understanding of what that space is, 
you might just get a feeling for it. And so let me just share with you, for those of you guys who feel like you may have stumbled onto it in dream time or in meditation, um, and you had a hunch maybe, or you had a confirmation that you were there, but you didn't actually get any information, that's okay. You gotta learn how to speak the language in that space. But you can feel. So anything that feels expansive, many times people talk about feeling home in that space. So if anybody's recognizing any of these feelings that you've ever had, again, you can spontaneously tap into the space, um, a, a space where you just feel a clarity of guides, of knowing coming in, of maybe where you're being activated. Any space of expansion, there is not a nature of fear in this space. Um, not to say that it can't come into play when you're doing a reading. Sometimes our ego gets in the way. Ego is anything that identifies as a separate from source energy. So anytime that you've had a process where you felt connected in oneness, you can definitely, maybe not everyone will call that being in your Akashic Records, but that's definitely what happens when you're in your Akashic Records. You are looking in on your own highest essence when I say that the records are recorded from a neutral standpoint neutral is not a eh. neutral is unconditional love and zero judgment and it is the way that God sees us it's the way that your higher self sees you okay Darren says what does the future hold for me so the future this is a great question but unfortunately Mm, it's a little general, but it's going to give me a great uh, continuation of sharing about what really good questions look like. So, Darren, if you want to ask another more specific one, you can. But the future exists in infinite possibility, okay? Here's how future works for every single person. First of all, where's my damn crystal ball? Okay. When we talk about future, we're observing linear time, past, present, and future. Okay, and the reason that we do that is because time really exists like this sphere. This think of this as the the multiverse. Maybe this is the universe, and the multiverse is the other ones around it that we cannot see. But every single timeline, past, present, all possible futures of this entire universe. It's a fucking lot of them, right? As well as dimensional layers are happening all at once, all at the same time, which is too much for human beings to comprehend, which is okay. Who needs to comprehend all that at once anyway? So what human beings do is we take one singular point, a singularity where we are incarnating as an avatar, and it's almost like we blast it out here, so our point's out here, and then we stretch out into a line we slow it down and we experience past, present, future. But when we jump back into the multiverse, all futures are possible. However, when you're out here on this timeline, let me tell you how it works out there, okay? Yes, all futures are possible. However, when you are working out here in this space, you've got to recognize that energy moves and look at it like moving in like concentric waves getting closer and closer and closer to you until you experience it. So all of them exist out here, but as you're in this line, as they're moving to you only, you're narrowing, narrowing, narrowing down. And here's how it works. Infinite possibility you start out. The more you rehearse a feeling, an emotion, an imprint of a particular future, that vibrational frequency moves, it kicks up a layer. It goes from infinite possibility to one closer, which is um, probability. So you move from possibility to probability. And then the more you keep fueling that, you eventually move it into your certainty, okay? So we go from possibility to probability to certainty. And you see that timeline, that delay? That's what explains the difference of shifting your reality instantaneously and then experiencing it in your physical world. We're all like, well, I want to figure out how to manifest now, instantaneously. I'll tell you, it doesn't, ex it doesn't mean exactly what we think it means on our planet. It actually means something different. It means that in the light realms, yes, you can instantaneously shift and experience a physical rearranging of your reality. However, in these modern day 
times that we're in right now. Sorry, I'm scrolling back to see what's going on. There's a lot of energy on this call. I totally short-circuited. I have no idea what I was talking about, but it'll come back to me. Hang on one second. Something about in these modern times. If I say it in that same weird voice, maybe I'll get it back. Okay. Forgot it. Okay, that must mean it's time to move on to the next question. All right, when I remember it, I will. I'll tell you. I felt like it was really important, but they're not bringing it back, so I guess I have to get over myself and just go on. Okay. Um, Lisa, when will I return to my family? I came away from them to get healthy. All right, good. So, Lisa, when you create the space of neutrality within yourself that is so dynamically stable that your family could never change, and you would be able to exist in your own steady, connected microcosm. I've said a lot of bad words already, but I'll just keep saying it again. There's a great word called unfuckwithable. It's a great meme. Because you first, it's this really long word, and you're like, well, I mean, I've never seen that word. And so you sound it out really slow, and then all of a sudden it hits you, and you have a good laugh. It, it's the quality of, of not letting anyone or anything or anyone else's motivations or thoughts or experiences or memories or anything affect you. Mm. Kate to see it with, oh, and I said that I was going to bring in activations too. Okay, so anybody who would like to receive that energy of being able to being unfuckwithable, and this isn't something that we instantly learn. I'm still learning it. I am not unfuckwithable. I don't have a lot of big drama going out in my life that's causing conflict or causing um, me to not be able to connect with my family. But I'm not at that space where I'm totally clear yet. I still get triggered. But I really, I really do loving recognizing when I'm triggered in a moment and being able, oh, that's it! Instant manifestation. Mm, thank you. Because this is what instant manifestation is. Recognizing when you're triggered and bringing yourself back to a higher peaceful state. Because you instantly jump dimensional frequency when you do that. And you open up way more possibilities for yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, that was fun. All right. So anybody who wants to receive the grace of Jesus along with the ability to be neutral. Say yes. Actually, and I'm going to invite you, don't type in yes. Normally I say type in yes. But we got a lot of questions, and I want to make sure that I get to them, and it makes for a long list to scroll down. So just say yes in your head and in your room, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, Kate says, with my gifts, what are the things that I need to prepare myself for in the future? Great question. Let me tune into your guides. Biggest thing that you can prepare yourself for is being able to hold a higher frequency of joy, abundance, success, and um, unattachment. Because what happens is we get to those stages where we hit our ceiling and we can begin to uh, self-sabotage. So recognize that joy and everything unfolding in its divine timing and beautifully under grace in a perfect way, as Louise Hay would say, is your divine right, Kate, and every single person else out here. And you've got to expect it to be easy. Now, easy meaning you know how to reach the flow state and you believe that you have the tools to allow things to unfold and to rise to the occasion as it comes. It doesn't mean that everything that you experience in life is easy, but you have the ability to control and master your own alchemical state. And that's really, really important because as you continue to grow with your gifts, Kate, you're gonna step forward and you're gonna start healing others and you're gonna start teaching others and you're gonna be kicked into an even more dynamic cycle of learning about yourself and what you have to share. It's really cool how that happens. It's like a really, mm, it's a very full cyclical process. When we come forward to teach and share, we go even deeper into that process, which brings up even more. So you have to have the foundations of growth. Loving yourself is huge. If you are still in judgment of yourself and you still have those places where you're triggered, you've got to solve those. 
Self-love is so huge. And then the discipline, the practice, the trust, the, the easy stuff. Because I can, feel, I can feel the power behind your lineages coming forward for you, Kate. Um, yeah, I do hope you guys take me up on those individual offers because we can dive in a little more dynamically to each one. So moving on. Okay, anybody, let me just bring it in now. Anybody who wants to open their gifts right now, who are wanting to more dynamically explore how they can understand themselves, heal themselves, shift their energy, create a malleable world, and share that with others. That's what spiritual gifts are. That's all that that's all spiritual gifts are. I know we think it's really cool psychic stuff, and yeah, that's a byproduct. Definitely working in your records will open your clear audience, your clairvoyance, your clairsentience, your clair claircognizance. But it's really just a journey of diving in, getting playful, exploring, and creating with all of this knowledge in the now moment. We've been so programmed to judge ourselves. Takes a little deprogramming, but you, we got this. We can get there. We're all showing up with exactly what we need. It's within our essence, within our blueprint. We just have to figure out how to illuminate that. So right now, just receiving that, whatever is the next phase of your growth that will illuminate how you can love yourself and show up for yourself more dynamically, may you receive that. So be it. So it Oh man, I totally was like so be it so it's like when I hang up with uh, when I hang up with my parents on the phone. I'm like, okay, love you, bye. And then I hang up. Sorry, I didn't mean to be disrespectful. That's just how we roll. I'm like, okay, love you, bye. So be it so it is. Bye. Next. Um, Jill Dow. I the dream I had two weeks ago was um was that my spirit guy was welcoming me home. Oh, and she's going to show me the Akashic Records. Beautiful. Okay, so anybody who is experiencing the Akashic Records emerging on your awareness, this happens when the records is coming for you, let me share with you what to do next. Start asking questions. Just like think about when you go into Google. So the Akashic Records are very similar to um, Google. Actually, I misspoke. Your Google. The Akashic Records are all of the cosmic information that's available on the entire internet. Google's how you get to that information. You have to type something into Google that tells Google what you want to experience. Remember how I talked about asking the questions. So begin asking questions. Don't worry about asking the right questions. Just be like a two-year-old and be start interacting. That's the biggest thing is embrace being a spiritual baby ask stupid questions to your guides to be be like a spiritual baby trust what's coming in go back to that original the original uh i don't even know if it was the original but something i said something early on about is it expansive if the guides if the energy if whatever is presenting itself to you is expanding you and feels like a place you want to explore get in there and do it because that process is precious vulnerability that will unfold exactly what you need. And if it turns out to be mentorship and guidance in the Akashic Records, I am here for you. And for those people who think that that's not, that they, a lot of people think, and, and I did too for a while, I thought, oh, I can't really afford that. No, once I made the commitment, it will open up for you. And I always like to do, for people who want to really do this and they feel guided and they don't know how to open up these blocks, Take that free session. Let's go energetically open up the blocks. We don't have to do it. The records can do it. We just have to turn it over. If this is the, if this is the right learning for you, okay? Um, all right, so anybody who wants to open up their personal access to the records, just receive this. this is our, these are your guides coming in from the records right now just to nudge you, to help you along the process, just reminding you, asking the questions, giving you little hints, little insights. Okay, um, Matrice, what do I need to know to spiritually connect with my inner self? I think that's better. 
Well, first of all, uh, love is coming in really, really big. It's oh, and you have the two hearts there too. It's to connect with your inner self. Most of us are scared about who we are, truthfully, on the inside, because we've experienced so much shadow time in our life that um, I mean, doing shit that you're not proud of. We there's a natural uh, energy that causes us to think that's what we're gonna have to dig through if we go inward. So first of all, recognizing that's not truthfully how it works. Um, Matrice, for you specifically, sound is coming in. So chanting for you is what I'm hearing. So when you do something like Ohm, uh, I knew I was gonna come out like all froggy. I wanna get a real, I wanna get a really good bellowy one. Hang on, let me sit. Let me sit. Let me just like give it. Ah, uh, that's a little better. Ah, uh, but you do have to sit straight. Ah, uh, everybody do it if you can. Uh, you begin to shift things inside of your body. Breath. Ooh. Woo. Yes, Matrice, that one's going to be good for you. Um, yes. That's an example of personal medicine. Yes, sound is excellent for everyone. However, some of us can figure out what our instant bam thing can be. And that's definitely yours, Matrice. Anybody who wants to figure out what your instant bam is, receive this and just have your guides show you. Okay, I'm going to keep talking here until the top of the hour. I know you guys, a lot of you guys are asking questions and um, I could scroll. Yep, there's a lot of them here. If I don't get to your questions, you got to take me up on the offer to uh, dive in for your one-on-ones, okay? Um, I saw, wait, wait, wait. Rhonda, I want to, because you're the leader here in the space, I got to answer your question. Okay. How do you keep from comparing yourself or better yet where you are with your gifts to others? That's a good one. Um, part of it in the beginning has to be discipline. You just have to recognize, look, just listen to this about comparing, okay? Comparing either leaves you vain or feeling shitty about yourself. It's one of the two, and neither one of them are conducive to your growth. So if you can unattach, it, it, it's our natural tendency because, again, it's very, very programmed into the old paradigm as far as, for us to compare ourselves to each other. Here's what I think. I think that old paradigm, old 3D, the one, some of the constructs, so think of, think of this as like the rules of physics that govern the old tribal societal human paradigm that we have most recently experienced. And that is to compare ourselves to each other. It's also to work harder than the next guy. Okay? It's also to send mothers out and work. Now, I'm not dogging any of you moms who want to go out and work because truthfully speaking, I am a mom who resisted staying home with my kids because I felt so much more comfortable in my job. And I feel very comfortable working right now. But I do want to recognize part of this old paradigm, part of how we are being tricked to be continue to operate in this old system, when we compare ourselves to each other, we instantly lose all of our energy. Because like I said, the only two outcomes are shitty. They're draining our energy. When we go and give ourselves a way to work that we do not love, especially because we have to pay the bills, and especially moms. And a lot of women's live like we're like, yeah, let's push moms in and out in there into the, the work for a lot of the collective energies that played on all of us as we come into this planet with the masculine and feminine so out of whack and this this pull towards, you know, half societal requirement even to have to show up and, and have two paychecks cause so many women to not be raising their children. And that's not good. 
It's not good. I'm not saying it's the only way that it has to work, but I'm saying we, we've gotten ourselves caught in a nasty bubble. I have participated in it too. I'm not, I'm not dogging anybody. I'll dog myself. Okay. In the new paradigm, you got to collaborate. One of the pillars that we have built the academy on, and that's why we have a network of over 25 live stream, live stream shows in the magazine, is because it's, it's about collaboration. It's not about competition. Here's what you should be really stoked about, Rhonda. When you show up in a space where people are better than you, hell yes, because the law of association says that they're going to activate you. And if you're, if you, and this is a collective you, because I'm not calling you out, because you invited me here, I'll be real nice to you. But if you dense up your energy, clog and dirty yourself up by starting to compare and going down that spiral, you're not going to receive all of the expansion that you can receive. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. That was always my philosophy in acting class. Seriously, as I, it does not behoove me to be the best person in class. I want to be the worst motherfucker, messing up every single time I'm going up there, having such an embarrassing moment I'm about to die so that I can grow, even though it's uncomfortable. But you shed a lot of your shit when you're in a space like that. So you want to be in a space where you can feel vulnerable and comfortable. Um, anybody who wants to help, let me wait there. It seemed like there was one other shift. Another big shift that I see from 3D to 5D that I just wanted to share is I believe that we are meant to show up and create our own jobs because the construct when I talk about 3D, uh, I talk about, I don't talk about this a lot, but I've been talking about it more and I do talk about it sometimes. But if you're going to, if you're not going to work because you love your job, you're not in the right job. If you're going to work because you need the paycheck to pay your bills, then you got bent over. I'll just say that. I'll just say that. And I've been there too. It's totally been there too. But energy is free, people. Human beings are the only people on this planet, the only species on this planet that require each other to show up and pay. Now, I'm all about reciprocity and value. I'm just saying that we are working to, most, most people are working to barely get by and working in, in areas that suppress them and don't expand their creativity and have them showing up in these gifts and skills and ways that we can innovate and change the planet we're stuck and it doesn't have to be that way because Nikolai Tesla figured out how you can broadcast free energy all over the place to turn it is not how we think it is it's not how we think it is so when and I don't believe that we're just gonna buck money and give up money by the way either because like I said I believe in value and I think that if there are light workers who are having trouble getting their abundance proper, this old construct one is not supporting you. No, that part is true. But recognizing that there is enough resource for every single person on the planet, and right now, resource equates to abundance to money. But I don't believe it should be money to keep your lights on. I believe it should be resource to travel, to explore what you want to explore, not to create material comfort for you. That should be available to us. But for you to choose, what experience do I want to dive into? Where do I want to place the value of my own growth? We're moving from a society, this 3D values materialism, this 5D values knowledge and information and experience. It's a different construct. And this is, that's one of the very practical ways that it looks different. All right. Let's see. Let's bring in anybody who wants to, anybody who wants to step into creating their own job and being their own boss and experiencing abundance and reciprocity for that. Just get some of that. All right, I'm going to get one more quick question in. And the rest of you, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for hanging out with me. If I did not get to your question, go find that link to my schedule. Okay. Let's see. I'm just going to scroll, get down to maybe a lower question here.
Lisa, will my will my study be successful? Lisa Tepin, Tepin, Lisa Tepin, Tepin. Okay, so I like this because yes or no questions aren't the best to ask either. So let me help you. Let me let me show you how it works. All right. So the future exists in infinite possibility, so it can be. And remember, it moves from infinite possibility to infinite probability. Or let's just lose infinite. It moves from, let me, just so I don't get confused. Possibility to probability to your reality. By the way, you can also go back in time and shift shit that has already happened, but that is an advanced lesson in the Akashic Records. So, with the recognition of will my study be successful, here's what I would like to do. First and foremost, anybody who has an endeavor on the horizon, well, let's, do, let's do a big grand finale. A big old hurrah here. Thank you, Lisa, for being the template, for allowing us all to get a big hurrah. Um, pendulums, I got all kinds of toys here in my office. Pendulums are really fun. Pendulums can be used in a variety of ways. I want to share, I just learned a really cool way to use the pendulum that I did not know from one of my students who is a master herself, Teresa Warren. How many of you guys know Teresa Warren up in here? So our pendulums can be used to clear for us. So here's what I'd like for us to start out doing. Let's do an energetic experience, first of all, to clear anything that we do not need, anything in our heart space that we do not need, that is standing in the way from us moving into the highest possible future outcome. Okay? If you've experienced embarrassment before, if you've experienced um, um, embarrassment before, <laughs> What's another failure shit? Any of your failure shit before? All right. I want you to allow this process, allow my pendulum, allow us to act by proxy here. The pendulum will act by proxy for each of you to release any of that density that you're holding in your heart space. Everybody take a nice deep breath in together. Pausing at the top, exhaling. Imagine you have a crystalline tube of light running up and down your spine. Send it down into the core of Mother Earth and up into source energy, Akash energy, ether, whatever you call it. Just create that energetic support for yourself. It can be just a quick little process. This will help support you in the release too, creating this channel. So when we do open up the heart energy and release that, we'll release it for all of you guys. So I'm just setting the intention now to fully release whatever that the collective and individually that you are ready to release, be released. If you are not ready to release it yet, then I'm just gonna hold the space that what needs to come to the surface for your own understanding and your highest good be illuminated for you. I want you to hold whatever this goal is in your heart space. So sending the consciousness into your heart and holding in your awareness this study. I'm, I, I'm gonna hold my arm still, or else you guys are like, cheater! Okay. Hold it in the heart space, and I'm going to ask the pendulum to clear this energy. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow it to spin and do its thing until it's done, and then it'll stop. So I just want you to breathe and just focus on releasing gratitude for this moment that we can all join here together, because as, as we collectively, individually and collectively release, we're becoming so much stronger together. It takes all of us working together in collaboration to succeed. There's plenty here for everyone. There's no need for us to compete, only to uplift each other, support each other, exchange our knowledge, our skills, activate each other. If you hold yourself in a frequency of love, of self-love, of self-honor, then you truly will see that in others. And that will create the most dynamic space for success. They're doing a last little bit of clearing now, reframing the idea of success. Success means attaining peace. Okay? Success means becoming unfuckwithable. Well, you see how it's stopping? 
except I'm moving it now because I'm talking. Unfuckwithable. That must be the magic word. Now I'm going to go unfuckwithable and expect you to be totally steady. All right? Okay, so that was the energetic clearing. I also want to bring in protocol specifically for you, Lisa, and anybody else who resonates with this protocol, it can be super duper simple. I just want to say it's 101 my time, and there are 11 people here, so loving that we are receiving that synchronicity of the ones, the 11s, the 111 gateways. Cool. Okay. For you specifically, Lisa, um, they want you to recognize that there's quite a bit of reprogramming, uh, a subconscious reprogramming that can be done for you, but it can, be, it can be done very easily. So what they're suggesting is creating a very simple daily ritual where you use your water and you're going to get your glass of water and you're going to program the water with love, success, talk, speak, speak into it out loud, everything that you want. Okay, and drink it down with the understanding that that water is becoming, it, it, it is metabolizing within you, okay? You can do this with your food too, they're saying now. Um, Sadhguru, you guys know Sadhguru? I like that fella. He's very wise. He talks about how anytime we eat something, within 20 minutes, it's, al it's alchemizing and becoming a part of us. So recognizing that that water has the ability to reprogram you. Um, and anybody else who that is resonating with, if you need to reprogram something within you, please take that protocol, use it, run with it, make it specific to you. And again, this is just the very beginning of what the Akashic Records can begin to unfold. There are so many different uses, but the main theme that I would like you to walk away with is that one, everybody can do this. This is a learned skill. Yeah, I'm good at it. But it's a, it's a skill that I learned too. I've practiced. The cool thing is with the law of association, if you want to be really good at it, I can make you good at it too. I had a, nah, that's a story for another day. That's one thing I want you to take away is that everybody can do this, okay? One more thing I wanted I wanted you to take away. And yeah, I fucking forgot what it was. Hang on, I gotta remember it. <laughs> what other takeaway do you want them to have? Everybody can do it. I love you. I love you. Bye. <laughs> no, that doesn't feel good enough. I don't remember what else the what the other thing was. Um, but. Hopefully, you're going to take me up on that offer to dive in. Oh, the medicine. Yes. That's the other thing that I want you to take away is recognizing, look at this as like the ultimate medicinal guidebook. It is not only ancient knowledge, but it's also tailored towards you. And there are so many different applications from releasing density or pain and karmic cycles that you've been in for a long time. If you need healing or self-love, this is a very dynamic resource. I'd like to show you how that works. I was meeting with a new potential student the other day who said, I don't really need this for healing. I want to expand and learn about my gifts. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's play then. That's the fun stuff. Not to say that it's not fun healing. Oh my God, I just realized you guys can totally see my ski pants that I'm wearing under here and it looks like a big old fat tire around my waist. Yes! That will, that's perfect because it'll leave me out with, I also have slippers on. You want to see my slippers? <laughs> this is totally reporter style. This is how we roll. But I have something badass in my slippers. I have these things that are called my divine souls. They're crushed crystal insoles that ground me. See, you want to stick around for the last bits of the show, right? Okay. I forgot what I was going to say again. Something about the medicine you find in your medicine. I got slippers. Oh, yes. Last little bit. I'll tell you a story from Hollywood. Um, Leslie Ann, what was your last name? I'm going to go, I'm going to name drop her. Leslie Ann, I can't remember your last name now. This is my very first scene. My first day on set and on The Bold and the Beautiful. I think it. Yeah, Leslie Ann down, that's right. 
I can't remember. You guys are going to know her. I'm going to show her. I'm going to hold her up for you. You guys know her? I can't remember who, who she played to me on that show. She was one of the... She was one of the few ladies on the show who liked me. The ladies didn't like me so much. I had a trouble breaking in a little bit. The boys liked me. Though. All right, so Leslie and down. The very first day I'm on set, um, we were doing this scene, and they uh, they had this like wardrobe. I I it was it was one of it was one of my first really really big breaks. I have to say, I had had a couple of other nice ones along the way, and there this was a really really big one, and. Um, I had also just had a baby. So fucking big break added with emotional shit going, stirring all the hell within my body. I And remember I told you, I like vacated. The Jack was month old. And the soap opera had wanted me to come work and replace uh, one of their top actresses, Bridget. What's the name? Of, what's the last name anyway? I don't know if anybody watches Bold and the Beautiful, but whatever that main family is, I can't remember. The, I can't remember their names now. Bridget, but I was Bridget. Bridget Forrester. Thank you. I was Bridget Forrester, who's a big fucking deal on this show. They had asked me. Well, she had a little downfall while I was there, but she was she was the shit before. I had uh, auditioned for the soap opera several times, and, and I was a priss ass in Hollywood. Remember I told you, I went to the very top. I want the best teachers that there are. I was not here to do a soap opera. That is not real acting to me. And they had offered me a couple of roles along my career. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. But at this point in time, my ass is slinging hash at a very high in Beverly Hills restaurant. That's that's industry lingo for once an actor, always a waiter. Yeah, I was working at Beverly Hills Diner, Kate Mantellini, very upscale diner, I have to say. If you ever saw the movie Heat, it was filmed there. So working here, having a baby, I'm asking my tables to wait a second while I run upstairs and do my breast pump, try to get a little meditation in while I'm pumping. Please get me a fuck out of here. <laughs> True story. Um, and then, you know, here comes Bold and the Beautiful, and it was a very great role, and they're like, you won't have to audition anymore, you get a paycheck, I'm like, fucking, I'm in, I'm in, and it was a very karmic ride from that point on, I'll just say, um, and <laughs> so, oh, back to the original part of the story, thank you guys for letting me have fun Friday with you, I'm just really letting it hang out, Coach Nick makes me only talk for half an hour, some shit that is. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this. So we're doing our very first scene, and wardrobe had changed clothes on me several times. I think I leaked milk through, because I was a nurse mom, I leaked milk through my first shirt. They're like, fuck, we got to get a new shirt. They put me in this sweater that has a black sweater, very similar to what I'm wearing now, except my bra wasn't hanging out, which I tried to convince Coach Nick was a T-shirt this morning. <laughs> It's my t-shirt. It's like outerwear. Big cuffs around the sleeves and off the shoulder and then like a huge cuff around the waist. Very similar to like my ski pants that you see rolled up. I do have real pants on underneath here, by the way. I have my jeans on. Okay? Okay. But I get cold. Little, little lady here. Okay? So I have this sweater on with the big cuffs around the sleeve, big cuffs around the waist. After the first scene, she comes over and she whispers in my ear in this very thick English, darling, you have to demand that they change you. You look like you're wearing a spare tire around your waist. And I'm like, fuck. Fuck. That's not how I wanted my first scene. And it just continued to go more rotten from there. So just so you know, uh, I have a lot of fun stories to tell about Hollywood too. I actually had a lot of really incredible experiences and successes, but that wasn't one of them. Just so you know, I should have listened to my damn intuition about the soap opera to begin with. I have loved hanging out with you guys. Thank you so much for giving me so much of your time. Rhonda, thank you for letting me talk so damn long in your group and inviting me here. It was a pleasure to hop on and share this time with you. There's a full moon coming up tomorrow, or actually new moon coming up tomorrow. Take that time to honor sacred ritual and growth in your life and take me up on the process to experience actually going through the ceremony to open your records. 
and receive activations as well as uh, ask some questions. We'll bring forward some valuable insight. I'll, I'll show you how these puppies work and can be a valuable tool and asset to you whether you are growing yourself or your business or just want to understand what the fuck is going on in this world. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>